Hi friends, host Derek here, host Talking with Fans People. I'm here with Rachel and I am going to make a video that Rain has been bugging me about making for a while, so I put his comment up here first, which is a follow up video of the Crocodile River story in which we asked the question about Abby, Barry, Carl, Dennis, and Ernie, and who was the most wicked or least honorable in the story. So if you haven't seen the first part of this, go ahead and watch that video. It tells the story in more detail and explains the question some. This is going to be going over people's comment answers and explaining what they, how they link to cognitive functions. I'm going to start by asking my INFJ wife, Rachel, to articulate her answer for the question who she thought was most culpable and why. So I think that Abby is the worst of them because she agrees to that she thinks that it's a good idea to sleep with someone in order to, to complete a task and um, I'm sorry but I would consider it cheating if uh, that happened to me. Even if I really needed a ride on a boat? <laughs> <coughs> yes, obviously. Okay, fine. So, what we look at here is first Rain's explanation or answer. Rain says this, and this is what I would call your textbook TI line of thinking as to whether it links with SE or NE. I don't think it probably would be the same for both, but I'm not really sure. But here's what it says. Uh, it definitely is a TI line of reasoning, regardless. I'll simply evaluate based on if the characters cross a moral line or not. Dennis simply doesn't get involved. His reason is stupid, but that doesn't matter because he has no obligation to get involved. So, you can't really condemn him for failing to meet an obligation he doesn't have. Now, the thing is, this is a TI frame of reference because if you're an FI person, you recognize that, in fact, friendship or close relationship does confer upon you some sort of obligation that if I need help and I call a stranger that I don't know but I met one time then there I have less reason to be offended if they don't respond and offer me help than if I call my wife or my mother or my child or something right people that we're very close to, we do have expectations we put on them, and that's reality. So that's an FI reality that this TI frame of reference is ignoring. Um, and doesn't judge Dennis for failing to meet his FI obligations because they can't be established as TI obligations. Carl simply offers a condition for Abby to use his service. It's a legitimate contract since Abby has no inherent right to be brought across the river and she has free choice to accept or reject Carl's offer that would allow her to accomplish the speed Carl does in the room. So, in this frame of reference, there's no obligation of Carl to prevent any harm. I guess this is an anti-FI frame of reference. Carl doesn't need to consider whether he's going to ultimately, like, tempt Abby into behavior she otherwise wouldn't do and will regret because he's not responsible for Abby. Um, an FI frame of reference would say we all have some basic obligation to prevent harm when we can and to not take advantage or ex be exploitative towards people who are in a position of, of need. Now, granted, um, it does seem like Abby didn't try particularly hard to find ways across the river, uh, maybe get a part-time job, earn some money, and and pay for her passage across the river or something. That would be a TE critique of Abby, though, that, a TENE -E critique, that there are lots of other things she could have tried that she didn't, is particularly... Um, and any critique, I guess. Uh, this one says here, it establishes the relationship between Barry and Abby as basically contractual. It's a two-party link where any one party can reject the link and hence break the relationship. Barry could choose to break up with Abby for any reason he pleases, um, no matter how reasonable or unreasonable. So because it's within his legitimate, it's legitimate, his legitimate rights to break up with her he did nothing wrong and in fact I think from most people's perspective he did the right thing in breaking up with her because she cheated on him but if you're particularly maybe F-I-S-E you might say or maybe if you're S-I polar even I, I'm not sure but you might say like well let's let, let the past go because you made a mistake I can understand that I can forgive you or expect that of Barry but I don't know who would really expect that um, and then here, Abby chose for a non-essential reason 
uh, to cheat and but that's not technically wicked or immoral in that she she owns her body and can do with it as she pleases and and then he finishes but cheating's complicated well cheating's not complicated in most people's book at all it's it's just unacceptable and there aren't justifications like that that can be used to justify it right well i really needed a ride is a terrible justification for cheating yeah it is <laughs> oh and then here Ernie beats up Barry with no justification, so even if Barry's in the wrong, Ernie's actions are not warranted. He just physically assaults him, so he's the worst. Okay, so that's basically your T.I. response, the most logical or reasonable response, but not necessarily the best, per se, right? So, in this case, Pedro says Abby didn't consider other possibilities. This isn't any critique. Um... And she initiated the sequence of events by taking the action that started this cascade of problems. So she's to blame. Now, that's an interesting reasoning, right? It's different than Rachel's. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's more of an any critique. This one says, my, least, my first impression was the least honorable dude is Barry. Why hadn't he bothered to see her for quite a long time? Hmm? Guilt, Barry's guilty of neglect. That, that's a very, I mean, that's I, I, that's very anti-TI frame of reference. Yes. Ernie was the most wrong. This is Octavia Silver's an ISFP. A person's reaction to the news, their significant other has cheated, is their own business, and he, especially the person harboring feelings for Abby, had no meddling in their affairs. So interestingly, she gives an F-E reason, basically, that he's... F, he's interfering with somebody else's business. Oliver Linehan, ISFJ, gives a TI reason. Ernie is worst. Carl's second worst because he's being exploitative. So this is TIFE. Abby, um, this is a NE critique saying he she could have done other things. Maybe you, you call it that. And then Barry and Dennis doesn't give reasons for it. James Carolus says Carl because his actions were the most exploitative. Um, and uh, he disagrees with, with the first person I read because he says it's actually Carl's behavior that launches the whole doorway for everything. And this is the reason why a lot of people do say Carl is they think that Carl is being exploitative, that um, he's the one that's doing the most icky kind of awfulness in some way. And so that makes him the worst. Like Z says here, Carl's exploitation makes me feel the worst. Swish says, I think Carl's deal initiated the whole thing. Of course, really, it was Abby's attempt to get out across the river without any money that initiated the whole thing, but whatever. Um, Bub goes with the TI response for Ernie and second for Abby. And I think that's, that's kind of to be expected for mm -hmm. this because at least we, you can understand that Abby... Um, violated some sort of contractual expectation, right? Treeman Forrest says Abby's the most guilty, followed by Ernie. Carl made an indecent proposal, but it was only a proposal, meaning he shouldn't be blamed much. Because it was her decision to take the action, ultimately, not his. He gets excused. In this case, it's kind of a, an SE frame that says, if things aren't concretized, they don't really count. Um, and Tiernan Wollaston gives what I would consider to be the most FV possible choice, which is Dennis. The Dennis is a bad friend, and so he's the least honorable. Um, but he ultimately sides with says Carl is probably probably the worst. And so this is an F kind of absolute value being expressed here. Does it tell us what type they are? No, not necessarily. But it does reveal how we can parse out justifications according to functions. So Laura says Ernie's worst, second is Carl. And again, TI reason for the worst. Physical violence is not justified. This is an anti-SE kind of frame, really. But it could be SE sophisticated as well, which says this doesn't justify action mm -hmm. in this case. I don't I don't overuse action like that. I'm an SE dom. Yes. Uh, second worst, Carl, wrong to exploit people. So this would be uh, FI, basically. Abby, what she did was morally wrong, but at least she considered other alternatives first. Having engaged in extroverted intuition doesn't 
doesn't make it less bad when you make the wrong choice. Well, at least I thought about other possibilities. <laughs> well, she thought about one. <laughs> yeah. You know, she, she thought about getting Dennis. Dennis could have helped, but didn't. Not sure I fully understand why he didn't want to get involved. And presumably then, if he, she did understand that he had no good reason at all, she might move him up the list, right? And then Barry is, she empathizes with. Eric says Ernie's the most. Tiernan says Carl and Barry. NT somewhere says the, the least honorable is Abby because she failed to honor her own values, which is a really interesting way of putting it. You know, it's like, it's true that she knew she didn't want to do what she was going to do, but she did it anyway. So some people might say um, she was she was the most the most willing to do what had to be done, while everybody else was pussyfooting around, un unwilling or unable to solve the problem. She actually got to a solution. Some people might say something like that, you know. Good, yeah. So in this case, um, but since she failed to honor her own values, that means that no no se should be done at the sacrifice of certain priorities, I guess. And Dennis, she interpreted his action as honoring the bro code over helping his friend Abby. Um, which which makes me that's feel, that's like the best way to condemn Dennis I've seen. You know, it's like, that's a pretty convincing way of condemning Dennis. It makes you realize, oh yeah, Dennis, did, did, if, if it was that, that's pretty screwed up, you know. Um, Ernie is the most honorable because he takes action to defend Abby or to, to defend Abby who's the least honorable <laughs> that's weird right see but that's where I feel like ISFJs get ESTPs because cause ESTP would like be like yeah they might be like that about Ernie I'm not sure you know um so Isgarn says Abby, Barry, Dennis, and Ernie's behavior may have originated from honor, so Carl's the least honorable. But when it comes to the worst behavior, I think it was Dennis because he placed his own comfort above his friend and her dignity. Okay, so because, and this is kind of a T.I. critique too, in the sense that Dennis, Dennis never provides the audience a reason for why, except he just doesn't want to get involved. Um, Barry's, and here's another Barry. In both these instances, it was a woman who said Barry was the worst. Cause it's, but plenty of women have also said that Barry did nothing wrong. Um, I expected more understanding from him for Abby that she felt so much desperation to see him. Barry's anger was misdirected. But everyone else's actions seem more direct, more well directed. What to does me. Barry do? He breaks up with Abby. Oh, okay. And is mad at her for cheating. And according to Chiana, I guess Abby, Barry should have been mad at somebody else. And she acknowledges here at the end, maybe it's not fair to have higher expectations than Barry, but I did. And this is an interesting question. Mm -hmm. People have such crazily different answers, right? Yes. Um, Dallas suggests now swap the genders and do it all over again. Adam is dating Barry. Carol has the boat. Denise could help, and Elaine is Adam's friend. Ooh, interesting, right? If if you change the genders, does it change your perspective on it? If, yeah, I'd, I'd say the person. So Adam wants to ride across the river, but Carol says, well, if you can't afford to pay it, you can sleep with me. He asks Denise, hey, Denise, can you give me a ride? I don't want to sleep with Carol to go see uh, Betty. And um, Denise goes, no, sorry. And then Elaine, and then after, after Betty breaks up with Adam, Elaine comes over and beats up Betty. Does it change anything? In terms of your calculus of who is most responsible, Rachel? I would say the first person's name that you mentioned. Adam. Yeah. So it's still it's still the one who cheated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. To me, it doesn't make any difference. If they're having an open relationship, then... Oh, <laughs> the, oh okay. open relationship. Now, now oh. Dolores, you're getting... That's too much extroverted intuition. Now you're just... It's just going crazy. Okay. Um, the F-I-N-E mom... So, in other words, Brenda Mack says her INFP mom says, or in other words, maybe she's saying this part of me, I'm not sure. Dishonest means to be immoral and unethical. It has nothing to do with the correlation between spoken words and actions in the literal sense. She wasn't dishonest because she got cornered into a situation where the only options were to either do the deed or never see Barry. Carl was dishonest because he took advantage of the situation instead of being an ethical friend. But the most dishonest of all was Ernie. He punched his friend even though he did nothing wrong. He was Abby's friend. He wasn't Barry's friend. Um, okay. So, that person needed to read a little bit more carefully. Let's see what Jeff Shaw has to say. Um, the only obstacle that can be considered is the river. Said obstacle is only prevalent, only relevant to Barry and Abby with regards to choices and values. Carl, Dennis, and Ernie are but avenues and seated constants along the edge of that river. Barry stuck to his values. Abby didn't. Abby's least honorable. Okay. It's an interesting way of getting there. Um, I'm not sure how... I mean, I guess I get his point that only Abby and Barry... Barry's inability to be in contact with each other is the predicate for this or something. So you can see we got a lot of different answers. At the end of the day, if you think that Barry was somehow the worst... You're almost certainly SEFI <laughs> in your argumentation. Whether you are in your person or not, I don't know. But if you think Barry's the worst, then that would suggest to me either FISE or SEFI. But obviously, you know, Octavia Silva, ISFP, didn't say Barry. You've got to be you've got to be really FI to give an answer like this person gave how. Maybe it's not fair of me to expect that much from Barry, but I expect it. I mean, why do you, like, you don't even know, you don't know anything about Barry. <laughs> why do you expect him to be so, so understanding? I guess because she's putting herself in Abby's shoes, probably, when she's answering the question. If she were Abby, the only way she'd ever do that is she was really cornered and had no other choices. So she said, that must be how come Abby did it. It's not using expert intuition consciously to say, Maybe she could have tried this or this or this or this or that, right? So, interesting, interesting question, interesting responses, lots of comments. It was, it was really good to see. And uh, makes me want to do another question pretty soon so I can get a lot of comments again. So, there you go, Rain. So, you can stop bugging me about making this video. It's done. Okay? <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye. Thank you.